we have another group from uh, what Malcolm used to say, uh, down home. He didn't see, he said back home was here, he said down home was there. So he used to get from down home and come back home yeah, as, as time uh, allows. Um, I've been here since, two, I bought this land in 2003 actually. Uh, I was the only one out here. I just happened to be out visiting a friend's family in the town here, and my father was with me. We looked around and said, hey, you know, one day this might be nice. So, so I said, okay. So I dug in the pocket and came back in 2003 and did the, you know, did the indigenous. So I moved here actually at the end of 2003, beginning of 2004. Built a little house here. I was renting a house in, in Accra, and I just go back and forth. Then in 2007, I got married, had two children, and uh, I thought I was going to see all of Africa. But after that happened, if I can get to our crowd, we were good. <laughs> but it's cool because the children have plenty of room. I'm from Los Angeles, so you know, uh, there's no way in the world I would have anything. Everybody black in Los Angeles who can see the beach, we all know who they are. They have like, you know, Denzel or somebody. You know? Not very many no-name folks. So this to me from Long Beach, Compton, LA, this has been a good thing. Um, a few things I go over a little bit about the wall, uh, just so you know. The reason we did the wall is because we had, um, you know, when I came here, I, I thought I was like Pied Piper, you know, how we do it. We bring all of that John Henry Clark videos and all that Sankofa movies and all that stack of Van Sertima books and all of that stuff. And uh, I was spending a lot of time out at the University at Lagon. But I realized that, you know, most of the students at that age, like university age, even high school age, their main uh, thing is to get out of the country. Or, you know, get a connection high in the country or try to get out, get to the U.S. So they kind of um, been oriented toward the outside. And I did think, and coming from where we're coming from, we know that's not where to be oriented toward. You, know, you need to be oriented toward where you have your land, your resources, and your people, uh, where you can actually build something that you own as a group. I'm talking about people now. So, um, but once I kind of realized that after a certain age, you know, there's a whole lot of socialization that's taking place, colonial mindsets, a whole lot of stuff is set in, and um, you know, and it's no one, it's not their fault necessarily, just like in the U.S. we get a lot of uh, our version of colonial mindset, you know, it's the schools, it's the institutions, it's the media, it's everything. So I realized that if I was going to have any impact, I would have to go younger. So I started going to the schools all around out here. Um, and, well, even in Tema, but mainly out in this area. And um, there's so many schools. It's like 200 schools right around here. You won't believe it. And um, trying to talk about African history to the younger ones. But the problem was, you know, it was very difficult to get to all those places. And they're all so noisy. You know, it's just logistically, it's very difficult. So I got the idea, since I already had the, the wall, I didn't have any portraits on it, but, you know, I just had the place walled up, to use a long part of the wall, just draw pictures of African ancestors and history, and then bring the children here on excursions or field trips. And then that way, two things. Number one, if their school organized for them to come, that means they'd be a bit motivated. You know, the principals and the teachers to kind of make sure they pay attention and all of that. Uh, so that was one thing. And the second thing, there's just nothing like these big images to kind of you know, freeze the minds or, or, or focus the minds of some of our youngsters. And so that's been working out well. 2017, 18, 19, 2019, we really did well with a lot of students coming through. And then the tourists, you know, folks started coming by just, a lot of it, they saw in Bomani's video and then other people started videoing it. But I always remind everyone I'm still focused on the youngsters because the whole premise of all of this get them young enough uh, uh, and build their confidence in terms of their own capacity and their own sense of agency and know, get it, know for a fact that their ancestors have done this and much more, then they'll begin to expect 
higher, have higher expectations. They'll be expecting to be in charge, expecting not to be dominated. Uh, they will find it absolutely uh, unacceptable to have people come in and dump, you know, dig their gold and dump the trash in there. You know, all of the things that happen to them. They'll lose their appetite for getting out and going all these places because they know what they have and they know what they can do. So that's the whole premise of what we're pushing here. And uh, people coming from the outside has been helpful for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, when you come and you talk to people locally, slowly they begin to understand that uh, maybe they have something here more than they thought they had. Because if not, why are we all coming down here to see what's going on, people moving here and all of So that's one thing. And the second thing was when they meet folks like you coming from outside, uh, you tend to remind them of the potential of the place and the potential of their children and all this. So it's very helpful, very helpful to have uh, our people come from the diaspora and talk to and just interact with them. And really, you, pr you make a bigger impact than even you know because some of them, when they listen carefully, they decide maybe we should do what we have to do internally. So, so there's a lot to say on that, but just suffice it to say, uh, Marcus Garvey said, up you mighty race, you can accomplish what you will. And so we know if our children, uh, I read somewhere a man was saying, if you can talk to the 10 year olds of any nation in the world and tell where that nation's gonna be in 20 years. Just the orientation of the 10 year olds. Unfortunately, if you talk to our 10 year olds right now, it's, it's, it's not a good story, but it can be changed because we have the tools, you know, I would like to have one of these walls or have someone have one and say every region of Ghana or every region of every African country. I was even proposing to someone that we have one of these walls that go across borders just to let people on Togo or Ivory Coast or Burkina Faso know that, you know, we're one people. And that these borders remind them that they're artificial and then dare anyone to tell them because of these colonial borders, they can't have a wall that goes across. So, you know, these kinds of things, if we can get them propagated, the social media, people hear the children talking, that's another thing. Children from other countries, other regions, see those children on there performing, talking, knowing their history. All of these things, you know, uh, have to be propagated and spread, in my opinion, if we're going to uh, see Garvey's idea, vision of building something powerful on the African continent. So a lot of people uh, focus a lot on how to buy land, or you'll see all kinds of things, the how-tos, and I think that's very important. Uh, I'm not the best how-to guy because, well, maybe I am. I'm, I'm a pretty good how-not-to guy, you know, mm -hmm. but that's important too, I guess. But, um, but my focus isn't so much on just the logistics of people moving, other people are doing that. My focus is really more on the why you want, you want to be in Africa somewhere, what it is that we need to build so we're sovereign, powerful, independent, and respected around the world, which is what Garvey's vision was, and what is it that we can do in the diaspora to, to bring that to fruition. So that's, that's where we're going with our focus uh, in terms of the diaspora. Uh, but in terms of the young people who are already here, uh, that's what I was just saying. So that's that's what we're pushing for, and I think um, you know uh, it's it's working. It's slow, but it's working. But it's spreading. So thanks for coming. Uh, the, la the couple of other things about the wall, just the way I pick. People ask me all the time, how did you pick the people on the wall? Uh, you know what criteria? And uh, it's kind of like um, what's What's your favorite music, you know? Who's your fav favorite performing artist? Or, you know, the brothers, who's the best running back ever lived? What have you? It's all a matter of opinion. But what I did try to do is I tried to line up attributes, you know, courage, creativity, leadership, and all the rest of these things, type of things, and then find people, find African people in our history, and kind of map them back to those attributes. Uh, you know, so when I take the young people through, we can kind of cover all kinds of bases. And uh, so that's why sometimes you see people you haven't heard of, but there's some specific thing that they did or did not do uh, that I think they need to know about. And I'll just give you one example, we'll see it later. There's a man, Felix Mumi, uh, or Felix, or Felix Mumi from uh, Cameroon. He was just a young, up and coming politician. Now, as far as politicians go, young politicians, 
I can't say he was head and shoulders above all of these other young progressive anti-colonial uh, uh, politicians. But he's there because I want to remind the children of something. He went to Geneva to negotiate on behalf of the Cameroonian government, of course, with Geneva, Switzerland, supposed to be so neutral and lovely and all. And while he was there, they poisoned him with thallium, <laughs> you see, and put it in his drink, and there was a little drama around it, but he ended up dying quickly instead of dying slowly the way they had planned it because they over overdosed it. And it was an international incident, quote unquote, that they were judged during an execution. Okay, now the point that I make, the reason he's on the wall is, is not even it's so much about him, although, you know, there's good things about him. It's about, you know, other lessons you have to learn, you know, when you're dealing with these folks. Because these children grow up thinking if someone ever went to somewhere like Geneva, you know, they, they're just protected. It's neutral. It's this, it's that. Fairness, you know, they have all of these things in their mind. So anywhere you go, if you don't have power in the world, you're vulnerable to be taken out or, or jailed or killed or anything else. So, so there's different lessons. I hope you going to see what I'm saying. That not always 100% about, I talk about Patrice Lumumba. You know Lumumba is a young uh, Congolese leader, but also uh, we talk about the Congo, you know, where we lost 10 million Africans in the rubber. Uh, I don't want to call it trade, just being enslaved in their country, um, harvesting rubber for all of the big rubber manufacturers in the world while cars and bicycles were really taken off and how they killed them and took, cut their hands off if they didn't bring enough, or their wives and children's hands if they didn't bring enough rubber, that quota for the day, all those kind of stories. Well, I want to talk about that and explain that to the young people. And sometimes I even have video when we show them some of the pictures and things. You understand even more than I talk so much about Lumumba. So that could even be kind of an introduction into something bigger. So, you know, I use these things all kind of ways to get a points across that, that we want to get a point, uh, I mean, that we want to get across to the children. So that's sort of how I pick them. And I was telling someone earlier, you know, I just find, uh, if I see drawing somewhere around that cry or Timma that I like, someone draws on the side of the bridge, it looks good. If the phone number's there, I'll take it, call them. And that's how I, I found most of these artists, uh, just like that. A uh, few references, but most of them I just saw something they did out, called them, and then asked them to draw something for me. So that's kind of all about the wall. And like I said, I've been here for a while for the purposes of trying to make Garveyism functional to the extent that I can. And um, that's kind of it. So the kids come here for classes, or they just come through as a trip, or just. Both, both. Some, some the schools have clubs where they may have a little history club or a social studies club or something but it's still associated with the school and they'll come last week or no, the week before last I had some children come here uh, from a missionary school so these missionaries white missionaries from the US and were there with them and they had funded the school and all of that well somebody who I know arranged that and uh, when we got there the, the missionaries were there and then all their students were there you know and of course when I start talking about certain things like Eve which you'll see up here you know the, the sponsor the guy with the money the white dude he wasn't too happy about that so he <laughs> say, hey hey you know that, that, that ain't working and so we, we go back and forth. There you go, get him, Jerry. And the children are standing there looking like, okay, well, who, who's got the facts, right? And of course, he doesn't, you know. <laughs> I mean, he's just talking. So I, I just turn it over to him and say, okay, explain. And then that's when it gets to the WWW. So it didn't take long before the children realized that, you know, part of this story that they've been force fed may not exactly be accurate. There you go. That ease that they've been looking at in all of their literature for all of their lives, you know, uh, has nothing to do with the very first humans in our species, which of course we all know now come from Eastern Africa, and that's books are pretty much closed on that. Uh, but the point is, the children's the first time they've heard anything like that. So. 
sometimes there's a lot of contention when we go through these things, but, you know, you bring your facts, and if you don't have them, then you got to keep moving. Well, you expose the lie. You expose the lie. The lie. <laughs> well, you know. That's what happened. Is there anywhere I can show you? So, so anyway, um, y'all have any... Anything to add? I, I've got a million things on my mind. So I can talk to that group, you got you. Any questions or observations or anything? So, how long did it take you to do all this? The pictures. It actually didn't take that long because I had eight, eight different oh, artists. Huh? So, you know, I mean, six months I had it all done. Really? You're going to continue it? I see. Yeah, well, you know, I got a lot of wall over there. I got more wall than I got money. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, we got to continue because you know when you come, you know, you're like, where, where's so Sojourner Truth? You know, I'm like, well, yeah. So where's Amos Wilson? I mean, I'm like, where's Amos Wilson, um, Digo. Harry T. Moore. Harry T. Moore. I got it all in my bag. Okay, we, we, you know, I got. <laughs> I have so many people coming by, and of course, what, what, Gardens. What, what about my uncle? What about my cousin? Yeah, <laughs> Gardens come by here and say, "Hey, you know, yeah. my uncle's the first one yeah. to bring, uh, you know, this is coconuts to that part, that region." Yeah. Of, uh, <laughs> this is a couple. It's it's a story. A woman, a couple. So everybody's got it. You know, everybody's would got you, a hero. Was your vision to make this a restaurant? and make this a year here. Was that your vision first? No. Have this property or and how long has this have you been doing this? As well? well the restaurant the part has been here for I'm sure about seven years. Is this, this here. But I built this thing. I, wait, was this you know, I, I think I built this just after you all left. I actually built the structure back in like two thousand nine or so. Yeah, because when I came in two thousand eight none of this was here. Yeah, two thousand nine. No, I just wanted to know I just No no question. No, I'm just saying so the no, way it Oh, okay. I was saying, so the way it kind of happened, I built this up here completely for me to have chill space. I sit up here and I write and I think and I, so that was all that was for. Maybe a few people want to come by and have a drink or what have you. It just had tarp across the top of it just so it wasn't so hot. And my wife's a, an actual caterer, cook, you know, she's working. And she keeps looking at this structure and going, hmm, that, 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 that's, too much for you for your uh, meditation space, your meditation space that ain't working you know. let's do something else the next thing i know you know i'm digging deep for for the restaurant and uh but it's cool because you know the food's good and the people like coming and but no that so that's kind of how it developed yeah but first it was just i was just up here enjoying the view yeah uh, yeah this breeze feels so this wonderful is the real Paris. yeah that's my that's, that, that's perfect. Yeah. 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 A lot of times, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, I like the panoramic view. You know, when I when I actually came here, I could have bought on the beach too. So when I went down on the beach, I was like, oh, this is nice. And then I walked from the beach. I came from the beach and just came up this road, which is just a trail. Probably even he came was probably just a trail. Yeah, it was nothing around and but I, just a trail. I walked, I walked I up it. there and I start feeling all of this air. I'm like, wait a minute. Yes. You know, so I stood up and I went, you know, went up on the ridge over there and just the wind the air was just coming nice. Then I went down to the beach and I realized, look, I'm getting better air here than right on the water. Because it's kind of going over, you know. And I said, well, that's what I'm going to do. Now, so I, you know, I, I like having the open view. Although um, sometimes I like to go close and see the waves. Things are so dirty sometimes, you get on these beaches sometimes. Yeah. You're better off being back a little bit. You know? <laughs> now, you, you were reading the I, I've seen some big uh, videos of you. Remind me of before, I see you some. Uh, no, I, I came here from Los Angeles. From Los Angeles? Yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, I spent all my, I guess, adult life, 21 till the time I moved here in LA. But I lived in other places, lived in Colorado, lived in New Jersey, Arizona. My father was in the military. My father was in the military, so I moved around quite a bit. So I'm sure you came to a proper Well, I, you know, I came all around West Africa. Dakar, Burkina, Ivory Coast, everywhere, Nigeria. So I was, that's I was saying a little earlier, a friend of mine in Los Angeles, his mother's from the village here. 
and so she had died, but he couldn't come back, you know, he's having some paperwork issues. So he asked me if I'd come and, you know, meet the family and, you know, leave a little something, something. So I did. And my father and brother were with me. Cause I, that was my father and brother. That, that was their first time to Africa, 2002. So as we were out here, that's when we started saying, man, you know, this ain't bad. And, uh, that's how it happened. Yeah. Take a look get me here from the In those days, you could get here about you and five other people on the road. Now, man, it's getting crazy. Yeah, it's getting really, really uh, serious. And the bike, the motorcycle, man, it comes to the Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It's, it's not. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I, I always say this about Ghanaians. Ghanaians are, are very, very good drivers. Now, people look around and say, what, all that traffic? I said, look, I mean, all they need is about this much space, and they get through it going about 50 miles an hour. Don't even slow down, you know? So what do you, and then you slow down, and yeah, they're like, what, what's wrong with you? You got two inches, fool, go! You know? You got two inches. You're holding everything up. Yeah, so, I mean, if I was in Los Angeles, I mean, you know, we need a lot of space, you know, here, they don't, they don't need. And everybody has the right of yeah, everybody has the right of way. But you know what? The, one thing I've got to appreciate though, the people have the right of way. So they'll walk right in front of you, you know, you have to slow down. It's like, well, I'm, you know, even the, even the, the sheep, the goats got the right of way. So I can actually kind of like that because it's like everybody's got some respect. Respect is everything. That's right. But I always tell folks, Accra is not Africa. So don't don't get frustrated by the traffic and all of this. I mean, you can just go. For, what, you guys went to Iberi? Oh uh, yes, up in the mountains. You go up there. You see, that's you don't worry about any of that. So it's just when you get down here in the south is when it gets congested. But this is a big country and a big continent, so you don't have to be in traffic. You know. Just, that okay. is it, man. You ready to make, uh, do that great mighty walk? Yeah, y'all ready to hit it? I'm ready. Okay, because we're getting that sun. Yeah, the longer we look, take to look, get down. Look at y'all sun people. The sun <laughs> is going to work its... I'm looking at y'all, make sure y'all is strong and ready. Thank you, man. Hey, my little guy. You gonna take the walk with us to the wall? Or are you gonna chill up here? Okay, you've seen it already many times, right? You waiting for your little friends? They, they already up? It's a nice little tropical area right here. We're gonna take that walk down and we're gonna start behind this behind this wall right where we came in it's one of those hot days so you know we're hoping that everyone can kind of move along strong get everybody a bottle of water and then those who can't make it can slow down and come back up here and relax and other than that we're gonna carry on and give you a nice little preview this is what we're going to be going going through maybe not exactly all 90 portraits but definitely the first set at the very beginning so we encourage you to either watch some other videos or encourage you definitely to come seeing is believing and seeing is your version of your experience but yes, family, we'll continue to give you wonderful documentation. And this is Bomani Time by Live on Revolutionary Camp. The journey continues as we enjoy this wonderful view of the ocean right from top of this beautiful restaurant.